Hey there guys, I've just done a quick live broadcast, uh, it was the very first broadcast on my channel and I thought I would take that broadcast and edit it down and share it with you guys on my main channel. So if you want to see future uh, broadcasts from my channel then head to my Twitter and you'll be able to stay up to date and know when I'm planning and scheduling those. So this was all about some products that Rode had sent me and it was a simple unboxing and it kind of turned into a bit of an impromptu Q&A. So this is how it went. And let's go public. Ah! Doing it. Is it public? How do I know if it's gone public? Do I hit share or save or what? I'm not sure if you guys can see or not. Anyway, I'm running live and you can see. Oh, hello, someone's there. This is, uh, this is all very new to me, by the way. I'm not sure if this is gonna work very well, but hopefully we'll have high quality uh, video, some good audio with it. This is very much a guinea pig test, so I'd like all of your feedback. Um, cool. All right, so uh, it's the end of the day in Australia and uh, you guys in Europe are probably just waking up on your way to work and all sorts of stuff. If you're in America, you're probably falling asleep or trying to sleep. I don't know what you're doing watching this. But um, anyway. Ugh. So, I have this massive box. Um, I've been talking with the guys at Rode and I've been looking to improve the audio quality in my videos. Um, and they've kindly sent out a number of different items, which is pretty awesome. Um, if you're not aware of Rode, Rode are a uh, audio manufacturer and they're actually based in Australia. Um, so it kind of seemed quite apt really now that I'm in Australia that I can uh, get in contact with them and work with them on some stuff. So they've sent over some products and I thought I'd unbox them here. Uh, this is what I used to do on my Periscope channel. So if you follow me on Twitter or on Periscope, um, you'll know all about that and everything. If you don't follow me on Twitter, then I'd recommend going and following me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'd recommend going and following me. Um, you'll find when I'm scheduling all these next live broadcasts and everything. So. All right, let's open up this box. I've been waiting to do this throughout most of the day, but I thought I'd share it on here anyway. All right. Oh my God. Oi. Okay, there's one lid. Oh wow. Oh wow. Look at this, it's packed. Woo. Look at that. Cool. So, uh, how am I gonna do this? Let's spin this box around over here. Plenty of bubble wrap. So first of all, this is the NTG4 Plus. Uh, this is a shotgun microphone that I'll be using for my videos of this sort of style where I'm sat down inside a room. I can direct the microphone right towards my vocals um, and it'll be much more condensed and direct than what the video mic is that I'm using currently. Uh, I could also potentially use this outside as well. Um, so I can see we've also got here a little windshield. This is a little dead cat uh, muffler that will sit on the microphone. Those things are always nice and soft. Now, an interesting thing about this, I've been looking it up compared to other microphones from Rode, and it's actually got a built-in lithium battery. So rather than other ones where you need to constantly have, uh, call it phantom power, where it's powered by the, the amp or anything, um, or powered by the mains or powered separately, this has got a built-in lithium battery. Um, I'm not sure about other microphones that have this, but I know for Rode's sort of target audience and price point, um, they're probably one of the cheapest but for high quality audio. So, let's get into this guy. Uh, cool. How are you guys doing anyway? Let me know in the comments where you're from. You can see we've got some people from Belgium. Where else we got here? Uh, Germany. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is the microphone. Uh, first impressions are, this feels pretty solid. Like, actually really solid. Um, you always tell when something's got a nice weight. That's when uh, that's when it works really well. Uh, I'm just going to check. We've got this. There we go. 
So, um, so yeah, first impressions. This is the NTG4 Plus and uh, it feels really good. Like I said, it's got a nice weight to it. Um, plugs in over XLR, which is like a standard industry cable pretty much. The same as what this microphone is that connects into a Zoom H4n. Wind muff shield here, it's a bit out of shape from the box. I don't know if you can kind of see that. That will just slot over the microphone like this, I imagine. I'm going to do that another time when it's easier to do. Standard USB charging cable. Um, so this just charges over USB with that built-in battery. Pretty handy. Microphone mount to go onto, what's that, a 1 8 thread? Something like that. Cool, so we've got people from LA, Egypt, currently not sleeping. 3.50 a.m. That's my usual uh, productive time of work. I don't usually sleep myself until about 4 a.m. So I'm with you on that one. Color grade video. I get comments about that all the time, you know. Like a lot of people are always commenting and I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm close to, to possibly doing a, a color grade video. The reason I'm reluctant to do it a little bit is because I'm not a professional colorist. I'm not a color grader really and um, I'd hate to kind of put across bad practice and bad tips or whatever so I'm thinking maybe if I do make one it will be heavily caveated that I'm not a professional and I'm looking for further tips to improve um, generally the way that I learn is by YouTube videos so just search color grading and you'll get some stuff all right, what have we got here? So this is the Roadlink uh, Filmmaker Kit. Now this is a wireless lav setup, so I can connect uh, just a nice little lapel mic um, and then wirelessly sync it to a camera, which would be great when you're out and about. I've got some exciting video projects coming up uh, in the next couple of months, which should require some sort of interview style type things. So that could work quite well. Um, Likewise, if you need backup audio, so say when I'm doing my sit down videos and I've got the NTG up on the camera, uh, I may also use a lapel mic just in case the battery runs out on something or it ends up being really echoey or, you know, just to have a second audio to make things better. I can't get into this box. Let's put the dead cat down there. All right, so opening up, ooh, nice. Opening up this. So first of all, the box kind of opens up pretty cool like this. Um, we got some nice artwork that just kind of sits. Now there's two parts to this kit. Um, so you've got the transmitter and the transceiver. This, is, what is this? This is the first one. This will sit on the camera. So this is your uh, receiver. And then this. I think is, yep, so this is what you would put on the talent who would be talking, um, who would be mic'd up. Microphone goes into there, that transmits the signal into the receiver um, that will just sit on top of your camera. So all a bit of a wireless setup. Uh, it's a shame I can't really show you because my camera's over there. A really small cable, but this is actually really heavy. I have no idea why this cable is so heavy. Mm, guess that's a good quality. We've got a little pouch type thing. Um, nice like faux leather style and in here yep this should be the microphone oh we've got if that was a dead cat um, is this like a little dead mouse so, <laughs> so we've got a tiny little wind filter um, so this is the microphone by the way it's yeah really small compared to the other one so obviously the other one's going to have better quality audio but this is going to be very discreet because it will just sit on there. Um, you probably see it on other videos or on TV interviews and all sorts. Um, that's how you get that nice like vocal sound with no distracting audio. And then again, a little wind muffler. I'm gonna call this a, uh, a dead mouse because um, it's obviously a lot smaller than the dead cat. Tiny little standard muffler. Um, so I think that would just sit on as normal like that. Perfect. I like the, uh, the addition of the little bag, that's actually really quite handy. <laughs> it would look like a little Royal Guards, that is so true. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, my little London hat. 
All right, so uh, this is just another little attachment for the bottom of the, um, I guess that would go onto the transmitter, because we've already got one on the receiver. Anyway, I've got stuff all over the place now. Let's move on to the next item. Has anyone got any of these, by the way? Has anyone got any that they want to share some tips with or uh, anything they want me to test in particular? Let's put this down here. Okay, so next item. This is the obviously the SM3R. This is their new uh, camera shoe shock mount. So traditionally Rode have used um, kind of bungee style elasticated uh, shock mounts that a camera would just sit on and it just kind of stops it from touching the frame. This is now a Rycote shock mount, which is a special type of plastic that kind of is an all-in-one enclosure type thing. Um, and apparently you can't bend it, snap it, or break it. Um, I don't know how far they test that, but it's obviously a lot better than the elastic bands that do quite often pop out. So let's have a look at this guy. So this is the new mount. Um, so you can see I've got a little bit of assembly to do. I uh, just need to kind of put it all together. Oh, got a little assembly tool for me. That's nice. And this guy uh, will just sit on top of the camera. So you can see I've just got the uh, cold shoe mount just here um, that will fit into the hot shoe. And I think this section is for where a cable would go through, I imagine. So you would put this on your camera with these sections and then you would put your uh, NTG shotgun mic uh, on there. So that's that, nice and simple. I've got a second one of these. Um, so you'll notice that this guy has been sat here the whole time on my desk. Uh, this is the Rode NT1A and this is what I use if I do voiceover videos, you get a nice like deep hearty sort of uh, vocal sound to things like a broadcast radio quality. And I'm hoping and planning to do some podcasts um, at some point in the future. I've always wanted to do a podcast, literally for like ever since the iPod video came out back in like 2005, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I've always wanted to do some sort of video podcast or like an interview type thing with other creatives and inspiring people. So by having a separate second microphone, uh, I can do those setups nice and easily and introduce you guys to some of the creative people that I work with. Um, likewise, if you know some of you guys want to get involved on that, um, depending on wherever you are and I am in the world, then who knows, maybe we could create some sort of collaborative work. Um, be cool to you know, create some sort of series on uh, creative discussion. So hold tight for that. There's no formal plans in place yet, but I am hoping to do some sort of podcast uh, in the near future. And obviously, good microphones like this means that the quality will be pretty high. <laughs> if I do a podcast, you reinstall iTunes. <laughs> it will be on SoundCloud as well. So if you really don't want to add iTunes, you can get it through there. I'm going to have to catch up with these comments afterwards. You guys are going crazy. All right, let's address one of those. So tips for growing views and subscribers. Uh, you will probably be able to find loads and loads of videos and posts online and people will quite often say a whole mix of various things. Um, you can usually work out what are legitimate ways of creating views and subscribers and you will also find some that are just kind of black market, dirty tactic styles. Um, make sure you do not follow those rules. First and foremost, make content that you want to watch. Um, if you're not making things that you're interested in, then it will show. So make things that you want to watch and that you want to see. And then second of all, make it to the highest quality that you can that is not holding you back. So by that I mean make content that is um, as high as you can achieve, but don't stop yourself from publishing it because it's not at a perfect level. So you'll never get perfect, okay? Perfect is something that you can never achieve. Um, likewise, it's also something that you can never get first time. So when you look back through any channel that you're kind of familiar with, 
um, you will always see progression. So if you're not seeing progression in your own stuff, then it means that you're not really getting anywhere. Main tips really, just make things that you wanna watch and that you enjoy. Chances are there will be other people who also enjoy it and watch it. If you're marketing it to people who don't enjoy it and don't watch it, then that's the wrong audience and you don't want that audience in the first place. So, uh, this is the shock mount and uh, you can see I've got mine on a little stand over here. Um, so this is what I was on about earlier where it's got little elasticated um, kind of holders. So that means that the microphone that sits in here, like this, when it sits in there, it's not gonna move around, it's not gonna touch any of the frame, and that means that you're gonna get kind of no external noises from the microphone hitting the frame. You want it to be as independent as possible so that it can just pick up your vocals. So this is the little cradle mount. This is your pop filter. Uh, now it's called a pop filter because when you talk and you say a lot of p and f, you get a big ball of air that comes out of your mouth. So this little pop filter just catches that ball of air it means it doesn't hit the microphone, so you don't get like a, you know, a big blow sort of sound. Standard heavy duty XLR cable from Rode, obviously. Um, this is actually a really premium cable. I love the one that came with this. There we go. So that is the NT1A in the silver variant. Uh, there's also the NT1, which is black. and. Uh, I think these microphones had an anniversary last year or this year, maybe 10, 20 years. Can't remember, but anyway, it's it's pretty much like an industry leader for its uh, price range. I think you can pick these up for like, I wanna say about 150 pounds, 130 pounds. Um, but the quality, the quality of it is definitely up there with most other broadcast ones that are say around five, 600 pounds. So it's a quality product here. And of course we get a nice little pouch with it. So that is, everything in the little goodie box that Rode have sent me. So now that I've gone through all the products, why don't I just hang out with you guys and um, let's let's have a chat. All right, let's have a look through these comments. When learning photography, what was the hardest thing for you? Uh, what lens would you recommend for a beginner photographer? Do I think Casey Neistat is a good vlogger? Who is my favorite YouTuber? Any tips for starting freelance photography business as a uni student? How do you stay invisible while shooting people? If you want to get better at photography, um, of course watch. Do I ever worry about theft when I travel? Is the Sony a7R worth the money? Thoughts on the a6300? Do I think the DSLR is a dying breed like most people say? Do I prefer to shoot pictures or films?